Our ancestors explored the world with star charts, primitive maps, even songs that passed down important navigational knowledge across generations, which all sounds very impressive, but it's way easier to just tell your phone where you want to go. We have that, thanks to GPS. And we have GPS thanks to a pioneering engineer named Dr. Gladys West. Hi, I'm Miranda Cosgrove. Welcome to the STEM Loft, where the landlord said it wasn't haunted and was honestly really weird about it. From the satellite navigation we use driving to the locations we tag on social media, most of us use global positioning systems every day. One woman of the STEM sisterhood was instrumental to the development of GPS, and her story was mostly untold until a few years ago. Born in 1930 in Sutherland, Virginia, Gladys West knew at a young age she wanted to escape her small rural town. She absolutely hated standing in the heat of the day, tending to crops and dealing with bugs. Gladys felt her ticket out of farm life was education, so she pursued a career in mathematics. Growing up without a lot of money, she had to keep up her grades to earn her opportunities. When a state scholarship became available to the top two students in her class, Gladys worked extra hard and snagged one of them, becoming valedictorian, which allowed her to attend Virginia State College. She didn't know it at the time, but her passion for her own education created a ripple effect that created new opportunities for black women everywhere. She majored in math and is one of the only women in the program. Nothing was going to deter her from her education. Undergraduate studies turned to teaching, and eventually she received a master's in mathematics that landed her a job at the Naval Base in Dahlgren, Virginia. Gladys was the second black woman to work as a programmer at the base and one of only four black employees. At the start of her job in 1956, the Navy was just beginning to bring in computers for the first time, and Gladys was hired to run them. She worked tirelessly, teaching herself programming and code along the way. And this was decades before you could just look up code online. Her time working at the naval base overlapped with the newly unfolding civil rights battle across the country. Gladys felt conflicted. Her government job didn't allow her to join the peaceful protests, so she decided to participate in another way. She continued her work inside the base in hopes that she could chip away at the stigma many black women faced in the workforce. She worked hard and climbed the ranks, gaining admiration from her colleagues. In the early 60s, she took part in an award-winning study that proved the regularity of Pluto's motion relative to Neptune. Basically, for every two orbits Pluto makes around the sun, Neptune makes three. Later, she became the project manager for a satellite monitoring Earth's oceans. In this project, she led a team of five people, programming calculations for an accurate geodetic Earth model on one of the fastest computers of the time, the IBM 7030 Stretch Computer. Back then, computers had nicknames. They should bring that back. You could call your laptop Ramantha, Operating Sister, Gigalicious, MacBrook. West would collect and process data from satellites to identify their exact location. The calculations from this model laid the groundwork for what would become the Global Positioning System Orbit, GPS. See, it stands for something. Like many of the hidden figures in America's aeronautics and space history, it took time for Dr. West to get recognition for her work developing GPS. West claims that she didn't even realize her efforts were revolutionizing technology across the world, and she never thought her time in the military to be especially exciting. She was even more surprised to see her work become an essential part of civilian life. For Gladys, it was just honest, challenging work. And later in life, she was amazed to see others so excited by what she'd accomplished. In 2018, West was officially recognized for her decades of world-changing innovations when she was inducted into the Air Force Hall of Fame. Even now, in her 90s, Gladys is proud of her work developing GPS, but she still doesn't use it herself. She prefers the hands-on experience of paper maps. I've always been a GPS girly, but let's try to see how this thing works. I'm heading to Rancho Cucamonga, so wish me luck. It's Miranda Cosgrove, your favorite host of Mission Unstoppable. I'm the only host. And if you want to watch awesome STEM videos and exclusive Mission Unstoppable clips, just make sure you subscribe and hit that notification bell.